Every time I let you see my drawers in one of my videos, you leave comments about it. So today we're gonna to take a closer look. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. This is the drawer where I keep all of my milling tools. I've got lots of unrelated stuff in here. I've got uh, all of my R8 collets. I've got some drills and taps. I've got some reamers in here. I've got some ER20 collets for my tool holders. I've got a couple of one, two, three blocks for setups. I've got some uh, threading dies, some slitting saws to go in my slitting saw arbor. I've got a bunch of new end mills in the box waiting to be destroyed. Got some boring bars and my boring head. There's the Superfly. Got some mill vice jaws, some uh, cleats for the uh, talon grips. And then I've got my main milling tools in TTS geometry tool holders. Now you've seen these before. These are just uh, ER20 collet holders with a nut with the Tormach tooling system geometry on the back. So it's a three quarter inch shank and a face register to go into the mill. Now having these in these tool holders laid out like this is really convenient. because so I can grab a tool, I can go put it in the mill, and then when I'm done with it, I can come back, drop it in here quickly, grab to the next tool without having them banging around in the drawers. Kind of no matter what I do, they stay put. They don't go anywhere, but they're loose enough in here. They're really quick and easy to grab and really quick to put back. Now, all of the organizers in this drawer are 3D printed. I've got some uh, round bottom trays so you can have small items in the bottoms of these like drills and they're very easy to just grab and sweep out. And some of them are just ordinary boxes that are just rectangular in cross section. These are the same as uh, shallower boxes that you can buy, but I 3D printed them. And then of course I've got the custom trays for the R8 collets and these custom fitted trays for the, um, for the, the collet tool holders and the drill chucks. Now, uh, all of these are my own designs and I do have the STL files uploaded on Thingiverse. There will be a link to that project down in the video description and so you can download and print your own. Everything you see in here and also all of the stuff that I have over on the lathe to hold the AXA tool holders and the drill chuck and the boring bars and uh, the live center, all of that's up on Thingiverse. The link will be down in the description and you can feel free to download and print as many as you want. Now I have a couple of new tools that I don't have tool holders for. This is the diamond drag engraver that we used in a couple of previous videos. I don't have any place for it to live. And this is an official Tormach TTS tool holder, ER20. So this is the official Tormach version of this, which is the import eBay knockoff. Um, they are a little bit different. You can see the geometry of the registers different. This has the tool changer geometry for automated tool changers. The length of the tool is shorter and the position of the nut is different. So this will not fit in these other trays that I've already designed. And then of course I don't have anything that will hold this. It's the same kind of geometry that I have on the drills, but it doesn't really fit properly in there. So those aren't gonna work. So let's go into the computer and I will show you how I measure up these tools and we will design a couple of new tool holder trays for these, 3D print them and come fit them back in the drawer. Okay, these are the tools that we need to make holders for. This is the ER20 collet holder. This is an official Tormach one. And this is the Tormach diamond drag engraver. Now, ultimately what I need to do is create a block of plastic with a recess in it that this tool will sit down into. And the easiest way to do that is to start by modeling the tool itself. Now I've got a pair of calipers here and we can just start measuring this up. Now the easiest way to model these is just as a series of stacked cylinders because I don't care about the chamfers on the back edge. I'm not gonna model the tool holder around it. I've experimented with that on previous tool holders and it doesn't really add anything or make it more useful. So let's start by modeling the diamond drag engraver. So let's start with a cylinder. So I can go in here in the tool and say create 
cylinder, put it on this plane, and what is the diameter? The diameter of this is 0.749, that's 0.75. And the length of this, which is not super critical, is 1.4 inches. Okay, and then next we have another cylinder. So create cylinder on this surface. And the diameter of this one is 1.496. And the thickness is 0.632. And then the last cylinder is a diameter of 0.748. And the length of this, again, it's not real critical, but it's 1.736. Okay, this gives us a very basic model of the geometry of the tool, at least the parts of the geometry of the tool that are going to matter for making a tool holder for it. Let me save this. So let's do the other tool. Now the shank and the tool holder geometry are gonna be exactly the same. So I can just uh, take my existing design, say save as ER20 collet holder and then I can just delete this section of geometry on the end here and replace it with what we actually have. Okay, so the next section we have here, I can just create another cylinder, same way, and the diameter here is 0.986, and the, the distance, the length of it, I want to make this work if this is turned, if the collet is screwed all the way down. So I'll run it all the way down and measure the distance in here. And it's 481 thousandths, 0.481. And then we'll model the nut on the end after that. Again, same thing, create a cylinder. Diameter 1.326. And the length is 0.825. So there's our geometry for the Diamond Drag Engraver and for the R20 collet holder. And even though these models are not very detailed, this is going to be plenty to create the tool holders. Now for all of the TTS tool holders in all the cradles that I make to fit in my drawer, I make them a standard size so that they'll all fit together in nice neat rows. So we'll start with a box of that size. I'll say create box, we'll put it on this surface. And the height is 5.875 inches. And the width is 1.575. And the thickness is 0 0.540. So this is our standard height for the, all, of, all of the blocks. This is a standard space that they have to fit into. Now let me save this. And let's make this one the the TTS tool holder for the diamond drag engraver. And now that we've saved that, let's uh, say save as and create another copy of it for the ER20. Okay, let's start with the ER20. Now that we have this saved, we can bring in the model of our ER20 collet holder. Just drag it in and drop it in the design. And I'm just gonna move this up so that we can access the surfaces that we need to register this. Now let's hit J for joint, and we'll put one joint origin, and we'll use this ring, and this is the register ring for uh, where this registers against the, uh, the end of the spindle, and we'll just click on that, and it'll, you can see it puts the joint origin in the center of that circle right on that surface, and then we'll put the other joint origin here at the bottom of the block. Now that's facing the wrong direction, so I'll flip it. And now we need to both move this up some amount and move it forward some amount. Now I'm gonna move it forward 1.5 inches 
And then as for the height above this, I'm gonna say 0.800. Let's make that minus 0.800. Now that positions it so that it's sitting within the block, but it's not touching the bottom of the block. So that should put it at about the right height that we can get a good cutout. So I'll click OK. And now we're gonna use this to actually make a cut in this block. So I'll go to Modify, Combine, and the target body will select the block, and the tool body will select the tool holder. The operation we want is Cut. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna use that tool holder model that we have as a tool to cut out an opening in the block. So I click OK, and now I can hide that, and now you can see that we have a cutout in the tool holder block that is perfectly shaped to hold that tool. Now let's do a couple of things. I'll right click on this surface and say extrude, and I wanna just go ahead and extrude that out through the end so that no matter what kind of tool we put in there, there'll be clearance for it. And then I wanna do exactly the same thing on the back of the shaft here. Click that surface, say extrude, and cut through the tool. So that means that the only place where this is really gonna be registering are on these faces uh, between the nut and the tool holder body and on the back of the tool holder body, or excuse me, the tool changer body. So that gives us uh, clean geometry for the tool to drop into. Save this in case I mess something up. Now that will fit exactly, and we do not want an exact fit. We do not want a machinist to fit on our storage, uh, our storage organizers. We want the tool to be able to just drop into it quickly and be grabbed out of it quickly. So we wanna create some extra space here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this surface. We'll just start with one, right click, say press pull, and I wanna run this down minus 0.025. So we're gonna push that down 25 thousandths. Now I'm gonna press control and then select some other surfaces. And so control is just allowing me to select all of these surfaces. And when I let go of control, they pop back to their original position so you can see what this is doing. So control, select that surface and that surface. And now by tapping control, I can see what's happening. So when I let off control, you can see where the surface is gonna end up. When I press control, you can see where it was. So you can see that what we're doing is we're just expanding that opening by 25 thousandths which means we'll have 50 thousandths free play between the nut and the body across this little divider that holds it in place. And when the tool changer body drops into here, we'll have 50 thou total clearance, 25 on each side. So I will just say, okay. Okay, that gives us our geometry to drop the tool in there. To get it out though, when these are all packed together in the drawer, it's a little bit hard sometimes to get hold of them because these rings on the back here are gonna be very close together and there's not a good space to grab it. So I'm gonna make a thumb relief here. Right click, create sketch on this side. Now I wanna project this line so that I know where that is and I can line it up. Okay, and then I'm gonna sketch an arc. Arc, uh, three point arc is fine. I use that point as a reference, second point on that same line and then create the arc. Now let's put some dimensions on this. Say 735 thou. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And let's give it some depth here. Let's set this at 225. Okay, stop sketch. Now I can select that region and extrude and just cut that through. And that will give me relief to get my fingers in there to grab the sides of the tool. Okay, that looks good. Now we need to save it in case I screw it up again. Let's put some fillets on this so we don't have all those sharp edges. So F for fillet, and I will just select, let's say 0.100 thou. And that'll just give us some nice rounded edges so that when we're putting the tool in, if we miss a little bit, it'll just guide it right into position. 
Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's put some fillets around these corners. Quarter inch. Now one more thing I always like to do is set the appearance for the material I'm actually gonna use. In this case, it is plastic, opaque, red, glossy. And that just gives me a chance to see it looking like the final material is gonna be, and that gives me an idea of kind of what it's gonna look like when it's 3D printed. Okay, that's one. Let's do the other one. We'll reload that saved file. And we will go through all the same steps for the diamond drag engraver. And there it is, there is the second tool holder for the diamond drag engraver. Now this one just has room for the ring, the thumb relief to be able to get hold of it and pull it out, and then just clearance for the holder shaft. It'll end about right here and then whatever tools in the end will stick out a little bit further, but it goes all the way to the end, which uh, just makes it a little bit more forgiving so it doesn't get caught or doesn't get hung up on the chamfers. Now there is one more thing I like to do when I'm 3D printing, and that is to put a chamfer around this bottom edge. Now, because I know I'm gonna be 3D printing this, and I know that you get a little bit of squish of the plastic around the bottom edge on the glass bed of the printer, you, know, you do that so you get good adhesion, but it means that the bottom edge will be slightly wider and it'll have a little, um, almost like a burr around the edge. And we wanna make sure that that's off and we don't wanna to have to come back later with sandpaper or some kind of tool to take that off. So I come up here and just say modify chamfer, click on that bottom edge and say 0.5 millimeter. Now I know everything else here has been in inches, but I do this in millimeters because that's just how I think about 3D printing. And what that does is it puts a very small chamfer that you can see around that bottom edge. Now in reality, since the layers of the printer are only 0.2 millimeters thick, you're never really gonna notice that on the finished part, but it makes it so that you don't have to do any cleanup around the edges. Okay, let's take these models, export them as STL into Simplify 3D, slice them, and print them. I'm printing both of these parts with PETG filament. We've talked about this before, but the reason that I like PETG for this application is that it doesn't shrink when it cools, so the parts don't tend to warp. That's an issue with ABS, especially with large parts. These are probably kind of right on the borderline. I could probably get away with these in ABS without too much warping. But if the parts get much bigger than this, it becomes a problem. Some of the tool holders in my drawers are a lot larger. The ones for my lathe tools are bigger. And the I also have some for TTS tools that hold five tool holders side by side. And those are quite a bit bigger. I think they're almost seven inches by six inches. And those, when I tried to print them in ABS, I had a lot of trouble, but the, the PETG is fine. The other thing I like about the PETG is it's also really easy to get a nice, smooth, shiny surface finish. And so far, they've been standing up really well out in the shop environment. These parts get banged around a lot in the drawers, sometimes when it's very cold. Um, they also get exposed to cutting oils and coolant, and I have yet to see any ill effects from that. Once these prints finish, we'll take them off the printer, Go back out in the shop and see how they work. Well, here they are, still warm right off the printer. Actually, that's a lie. They're not still warm. Uh, you have to let them cool down so that the polymers in the hairspray will release and you can get them off the bed without breaking the glass. I'm very happy with how these turned out. They're really nice and smooth and shiny. I don't know if you can see that surface finish, but I just, I always love the results I get with the Pet G. The uh, turned up nice and clean. Uh, I didn't have to do any kind of cleanup. That little chamfer around that bottom edge, uh, it, it really eliminates the squeeze out on the bottom. You can't really even tell there's a chamfer there, but because um, it kind of gets squished out and filled in, but you also don't get any edge that has to be cleaned up. So I am very, very pleased with the way these turned out. Let's check the fit with the tools. This is the one for the collet holder. And that fits nicely, a little bit of play, so it holds it securely, but it doesn't have to be terribly precise putting it in or out. And the one for the diamond drag engraver. 
that's working the same way and it's got the nice little finger holes there so I can easily grab it and pull it out. I'm happy with that. Let's find a place for them in the drawer. Now this drawer is very full and it's kind of full of everything. I'm gonna need to reorganize this. I'm thinking that I wanna dedicate this mostly for tools that are ready to use in the mill. So I've got these tools here. I've got the two new ones I'm adding. I've got you know the boring head and some other tools over here that don't have proper organizers like the uh, Superfly which is just rattling around in a box. So I'll probably end up making more and creating a larger grid of tools and moving some of the other stuff like the, the stock of cutters or the drills, you know, someplace else. But for now, I'll just take out these two boxes. This is my keyway slotting tool, some uh, blank drill blanks and um, the cleats for the uh, talon grip jaws. And I'll put these someplace else for now. And we'll just use this space. Now drop these in. Now, one thing about these when you print them as separate pieces is that there's more motion. You can see as I put this in here and take them out, they move around a lot more uh, than they do when you print them larger. So if I have one of these printed with multiple tools all in one block, the weight of the other tools helps to keep this in place. Now, as the drawer gets full and everything is packed in, just having these constrained by the other tools around them will you know, take care of some of that problem. Plus, with time, the plastic will start to stick to the rubber drawer liner mat. But I am very happy with that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all of the organizers that you see in this drawer, the boxes, the collet holders, and everything that you've seen in my drawers over at the lathe, um, also for the AXA tool post holders, the live center, the drill chuck, the boring bars, the ER40 collets, all of the designs for all of this are available for download on Thingiverse. There'll be a link down in the description so you can feel free to download and print as many as you would like. Well, that's all I have for today. If you are enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.